چند اشار نا شریف یا من کے بعد پیش کریں گے اس کے فوراً بعد مفتی صاحب کا بیان شروع ہو جائے اللہ 
محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ایک میں ہی نہیں یل پر قربان زمانہ ہے ایک میں ہی نہیں یل پر قربان زمانہ ہے جو رب جو عالم کا محبوب یا گانا ہے کل پل سے ہمیں جس نے خود پار لگانا ہے کل پل سے ہمیں جس نے خود پار لگانا ہے زہرا کا وہ بابا ہے حسنین کا نانا ہے زہرا کا وہ بابا ہے حسنین کا نانا ہے الحمد للہ رب العالمین والعاقبۃ للمتقین والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسوله محمد و آله و صحبه اجمعین اما بعد فقال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم قد جاءكم من الله نور وكتاب مبين صدق اللہ العظیم 
وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين المختار الكريم ونحن ولا ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين انتہائی محترم اور مکرم میرے بزرگو نوجوان ساتھیو عزت معاب میری ماں اور بہنوں آئیے سب سے پہلے ہم سب کے آقا و مولا حضور تاجدار مدینہ سرور قلب و سینہ محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی بارگاہ میں اپنی غلامی کا ثبوت دیتے ہوئے باواز بلند درود پاک کا ہدیہ پیش کریں اور پڑھیں اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليك وسلم Once again with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are gathered in the most beautiful place on the earth and in the most beautiful majlis, the majlis of the remembrance of the martyrs of Karbala. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is mehfil ke sadqe mein hum tamam ki maghfirat farmaye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states in the Holy Quran, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُور وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ That, O oh believers, among you a nur has arrived, a light has come. Wa kitabun mubin and an open book. Mufassirun and many of them they agree on this that the nur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Holy Quran this nur is none other than. Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam. As we all know that to read the book you need the light. Without the light it is impossible to read any book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Holy Quran and with the Holy Quran his beloved Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So you and I we can read the Holy Quran under the nur and light of Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent his beloved Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as a light in such a way that not only he enlightened those people who were around him, in fact the nasli Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the children of Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam until the day of Qiyamah, they were classed as children of Noor and children of Light. Allah Hazrat, very beautifully praising Ahlul Bayt and praising Rasulullah Ali Salat was Salam, he mentions, and we listen to this share and we listen to this couplet every time when we talk about Ahl Bayt Rasul Sallallahu Taala Ali Sallam, and he says, "Tere nasle paak mein hai." Bacha Bacha Noor Ka Ya Rasulullah There are people fighting over Rasul being Noor As a Sunni As Ahl Sunnati wa Jamaat We believe that not only you But Bacha Bacha Every single child From the Nasl and from the children of Rasulullah Ali Salatu wa Salam They are Noor Ka Tu hai Aine Noor Ya Rasulullah, you are the fountain of Noor. Ayn Noor. You are the actual Noor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Tu hai Ayn Noor, tera sab gharana Noor ka. Ya Rasulullah, all of your household, they are Noor and they are light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them the light for the Ummah. And today we are going to talk about those two beautiful grandsons of Rasulullah Ali Musalam who are very dear and very close to Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Ali Sallam. If somebody asks you about your grandchildren, whose child is this? You are going to say 
This child is my daughter's or my son's. ये मेरा पोता है मेरे बेटे का बेटा है या फिर मेरी बेटी का बेटा या बेटी है रसूल अक्रम सलाम ही यूज टू रिफर एट बोथ ऑफ हिज ग्रैंड चिल्ड्रन हजरत सैदना इमाम हसन मुशतबा एंड हजरत सैदना इमाम हुसैन शहीद करबला एज हिज ओन चिल्ड्रन ही यूज टू खोल दम हादा इबनाया दीज आर माई चिल्ड्रन दैट्स हाउ क्लोज रसूल अक्रम सल्लम ही कैप्ट both of his grandchildren to his heart we'll begin with the beautiful zikr and beautiful mentioning of hazrat sayyidina imam hasan mujtaba radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu hazrat imam hasan's his name is known by every single muslim he was known as hasan hasan if you look at the root word it comes from husn what is husn husn mean beauty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given hazrat sayyidina imam hasan radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu the outer beauty and he was very very handsome and with the outer beauty because for a person to be good looking outside is not everything maybe many of us we believe and we do so making our outer look better and good but in fact the inside the more beautiful you are from inside that is what the actual beauty is Subhan- allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed hazrat sayyidina imam hasan mujtaba radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu with the external and internal beauty both of them Subhan- allah ne aapko zahiri aur batini dono khoobsurtiyan ata farmayi thi when he was born on 15th of ramzan in the third hijri many mu'arikun they have written they have written fourth hijri but the most authentic one is he was born in third year of hijri rasulullah ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam he went to visit hazrat sayyidina ali karimallahu ta'ala wajhul kareem and khatun jannat hazrat sayyida fatima tu zahra radhiyallahu ta'ala anha prophet asked hazrat sayyidina ali who is father of hazrat imam hasan he said ali What have you named your child? <laughs> Ali tumne apne bete ka naam kya rakha? Maulai kainat Ali sher e khuda mushkil kusha karam Allah taala wajhahu al kareem he replies to Rasulullah ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam that ya Rasulullah whilst you are among us how can i dare to give name to my child? Main ye jurrat kaise kar sakta hu ki aapke hote hue ya Rasulullah apne bete ko main naam dun This was the love and the respect sahabe kiram and the household of Rasulullah ali musallam they held for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Prophet ali sallatu wasallam he remained silent for a short while and in Tabqat ibn Sa'd it says whilst Prophet ali sallatu wasallam was silent Hazrat Jibril ali sallam he comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam look at the maqam of ahli bayt Now people in today's day and age if they talk ill about ahli bayt athar they should learn from this riwayat that when it comes to naming the grandchild the grandson of rasulullah ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam it comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hamare ghar bachcha paida hota hai to hum kisi alim se poochte hain hum kisi sayyid se poochte hain ki hazrat iska naam de koi acche naam de ki isme se naam hum muntakhab kare When a child is born in the family of Rasulullah Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it is Jibril who comes from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Jibril comes to Rasulullah Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during that period when Rasulullah Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was silent and he says ya Rasulullah Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is sending his salam upon you and he said that keep the name of this child Hasan iska naam Hasan rakhe या रसोल अल्लाह आपको सलाम भेजता है और फरमाता है कि इसका नाम हसन रखें सो इवन द नेम ऑफ दिस ब्यूटिफुल ग्रांड सन ऑफ रसोल आलीसलाम इट वॉज चोजन बाई अल्लाह सुबह नाउ मैनी ऑफ द टाइम्स एवरी पेरेंट दे बिलीव एंड दे वॉन्ट द चाइल्ड टू हैव ए गुड सोहबत एवरी पेरेंट वुड वॉन्ट टू हैव द चाइल्ड टू हैव गुड फ्रेंडशिप which affects them 
which affects their personality, which affects in their characteristics. Look at the sohbat and connection and the time that Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala who has spent. Who did he spend his time with? The first six years and four months, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala who he has spent in the sohbat and in the company of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. And then seven years of his life, he has spent in the company of his beloved mother, Hazrat Khatun Jannat, Sayyid Kainat Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. What would he have learned during those times? And Muhaddisun they say that there are about 13 ahadith narrated by Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala. If you imagine, when Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam passed away, he was about seven years old. Hazrat Imam Hassan was approximately seven years old. At the age of seven, what a child can hear, can remember, and can pass it on. Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he remembered 13 ahadith from Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, and today you will find those ahadith in the books of ahadith narrated by Hazrat Hassan and Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala. And then a large portion of his life, 37 years of his life, he has spent in the company of Hazrat Sayyidina Ali Murtada radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sati saal apni zindagi ke unho ne apne walid Hazrat Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu ki sohbat mein guzare. Now his tarbiyat, his upbringing and the way he was brought up in the family was by these great personalities. Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam, Hazrat Khatun Jannat Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha, and Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu, and Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem. All of those qualities which were acquired by, the, by these great personalities, they passed it on to Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu. His appearance, how he looks like, he was very close to Rasulullah in terms of his appearance. One of the narration in Bukhari Sharif and in other books with just few different wordings. Hayat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu one day he performed Asr Salah. Salla Abu Bakr in al-Asra fa kharaja yamshi. Now listen to this riwayat very carefully. Hayat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu once he performed Asr Salah. Fakhara Jayamshi and after performing his Asr Salah, he went out walking. Wa ma'ahu Aliyun. And with him, it was Hurt Sina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem. Fara al Hasana Yalabu. Hurt Walker saw that Hazrat Imam Hasana Mushtaba was playing Ma'asibiyan with the children. After Asr, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, when he went out walking, he saw Hazrat Imam Hassan and Mushtaba was playing with the children. فَحَمَلَهُ عَلَىٰ آتِقِهِ Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq lifted Hazrat Imam Hassan رضي الله تعالى عنه and placed him on his shoulder. اپنے کندے پر ان کو بیٹھا لیا. قال And then Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq said بِأَبِي شَبِيهُمْ بِالنَّبِي My father be sacrificed to this child. He is very close in terms of looking, he resembles Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. And then the next sentence he said to Hazrat Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and this shows how close Ashabi Rasul Ali Musalam were, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, how close they were to each other. And then he looked at Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he said, Laysa Shabihum bi Ali. He does not look like Ali. He looks like Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. He does not look like Ali. What happened then? What was the reaction of Hazrat Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu? The, the narrator says, Wa Aliyun yadhaku. When Hazrat Ali heard this comment of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Ali started to laugh. Hasne lage. Ke Abu Bakr ne kaisi piyari baat kahi hai, ki isme bhi muhabbat ka izhar hai. Even this comment of Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it shows 
the love for Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan and for Hazrat Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Another beautiful narration from Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. and the riwayat I'm going to mention here, you'll find various narrations on the same topic. Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala says that there was an occasion where I was present and since then, the love of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it took place in my heart forever. What was that occasion? He says, Ra'aytul Hassana fi Hijrin Nabi. I saw Hazrat Imam Hassan in the lap of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. And in some narration, he says that Rasul Ipaq alayhi salatu wasalam was on the mimbar giving speech and I saw Hassan and Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the lap of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Wa huwa yudkhilu asabi'ahu fi lihyatihi. Hazrat Imam Hassan was doing this, entering his beautiful small fingers in the beautiful beard of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. As many babies do, when you pick them up, the first thing if you have a beard, they start to stroke it. Hazrat Imam Hassan was doing that. One Nabiyu Yudhilu Lisanahu fi fi. And Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam, he was placing his beautiful tongue in the mouth of Hadati Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala. Now, what do we know about the personality of Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam? The tongue is part of the body of Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. And the saliva that comes out from the blessed mouth is also from Rasulullah Now in one of the riwayat you will find in Siha, in one of the uh, battles, a Sahabi got injured and his injury was so bad that his eyeball came out and he would, it was hanging. Now he comes to Rasulullah Now imagine when we have any injuries, when we are injured, we currently do not have Prophet to refer to. Sahaba had that tabib and that doctor. So he went to Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam. The Sahabi says Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam held it, placed it back and put his saliva, blessed saliva on my eye. The effect was that the eye which was injured in the battle after Rasulullah Wasallam fixed it, it became more powerful than the natural eye I had. I never had any problem in my entire life until I was alive that I was the most powerful. This is the effect of the blessed saliva of Rasulullah Wasallam. Sayyidina Abu Huraira in this narration he is mentioning that Rasulullah Wasallam he placed his Blessed tongue in the mouth of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala in his mouth. And then he said, Thumma yaqool, Allahumma inni uhibbuhu. Wallah, I love this son of mine. I love Hazrat Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala in his So loving Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan is the sunnah of Rasulullah Ali salatu was salam. And now look at the narration where Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, he is worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He is bowing down to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And during that, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Shaddad, he narrates from his father Shaddad. And he says that Rasul Akram Ali Salatu Wasalam, one day he was leading one of the Salah, Zuhr or Asr. And during one of the Sajda, he took very long, unusual long Sajda. And then at the end of Salah, some of the Sahaba, they said to Prophet Wasallam that Ya Rasulullah, out of curiosity, they said, Ya Rasulullah, today your sajda was very long. Rasul Akram wasalam, he replied to the Sahaba that, Oh my companion, whilst I was in sajda, my grandson Hassan came on my back. Sajda ki halat mein mera nawasa Hassan meri peet pe baith gaya. Mujhe ye gawara na hua ki apne sajde ko mukhtasar karo aur usse takleef pahunche. I could not shorten my sajda. I could not complete and lift my head from sajda 
thinking that, that Hassan is still on my back. When he came down, that's when I came up from my sajda. Look at the love of Rasulullah How amazing and how dear they were to Rasulullah that even during the salah, he used to show his love and shower his love to his grandson, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba and Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And in many narration, it's been mentioned that when Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam used to be in Ruku and Hurt Imam Hassan was around, he would keep his legs a bit wider. Why? So Hadrat Imam Hassan Mujtaba could go around in between the legs of Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. What does this show? There are two things in this riwayat that we can learn. The first thing is Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. He used to love his grandchildren dearly. Loving children is the sunnah of Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. I don't know how people they can find in their heart when they beat their children up. What do they have in their heart when they beat their children? Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam did not teach any believer, any Muslim, beat a teacher of madrasa to beat their children or their students. This is not the Islamic way. When you are teaching and you are beating your children or students, that's not the way. As a teacher, when I teach, I take those children as my own children. This is how I teach. And this is, that's the way every teacher should be. Rasul Akram Ali Salatu Wasalam, he taught us by widening his legs during the Salah that you should show your love and compassion to your children. And second thing we learn, when we have children in Masjid, yes, many times we do get disturbed. When we are performing Salah, we do understand this mechanism that when we pray Salah, especially with the Jama'at, and if the children are around, then if they make noise, we do get disturbed. But there is another thing we need to understand. Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam, he never stopped children from coming to Masjid. As long as those children, they can keep Paki and cleanliness, Prophet never stopped them. Hayat Sayyidina Imam Hassan used to come to Masjid. Hayat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala who used to come to Masjid at a very young age. If you won't let them come in the Masjid at a young age, when would they learn to come to Masjid then? When they are at the age of eight and nine, then you tell them, let's go to Masjid. They have never shown, they were never shown the way to Masjid. They were never shown that love and attraction in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by those namazis in the masjid, how are they going to come to masjid? So one very important message that we learn from this hadith of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam is that love children, let them come to masjid. If they can keep the house of Allah clean, that is their age to come to masjid. If they make little bit of noise, understand it, they are children, they are not adults. You shouldn't shout at them that sit down because they don't understand. They are coming to know the masjid. They're coming to understand that this is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is their beginning. Let them love the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let them enjoy the place of worship and let them understand that these are people who stand and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the house of Allah. They will learn gradually and then they will have habit to love the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another narration that uh, Sahaba, Sahaba mentioned that Kana Rasulullah This is again in Bukhari Sharif in, uh, and in different books of Ahadith with different wordings. Kana Rasulullah Hamilin al Hassan ibn Aliyin. Rasul Akram Ali Salatu Islam one day he was going with Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan carrying him on his shoulder. One of the Sahabi Faqala Rajulun a sahabi so and he said ni'mal markabu rakibta ya ghulam what a beautiful ride you are enjoying oh young child oh son what a beautiful ride you are enjoying and imagine sahaba for them just to look at rasulullah ali salatu wasalam was everything and then they are seeing a child who is being carried by rasulullah ali salatu wasalam so he expressed his joy he said what a beautiful ride you have now Rasulullah Ali Salatu Salam he turned around and he said, Fakal and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Ali Salatu Salam said to the Sahabi, Wa ni'amar raqibu huwa. You're looking at the ride. Why don't you look at the rider? 
How beautiful that rider is. How handsome that rider is. This is how Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam he showered his love on Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ibn Kasir mentions from Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala that Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam stated, Man sarrahu an yandura ila Sayyidi Shababi Ahlil Jannah fal yandur ila al Hassan. Anyone who gets happy or who would love to look at Sayyida, Sayyidi Shababi Ahlil Jannah, the leader of the youth of Jannah, then he should look at Hassan Mujtaba. Jis kisi ko is baat se khushi hoti ho ke wo jannati naujwano ke sardar ko dekhe to wo Hassan ko dekhe. Ye jannati naujwano ke Sardar hai. And the same hadith, similar hadith has been mentioned for Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu as well. Now one of the very important and very interesting occasion that took place in the life of Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba, which I will very briefly mention in front of you. This hadith points at that occasion. In Bukhari Sharif, Imam Bukhari quotes this hadith that Rasulullah Ali Salatu Waslam he stated, In Nabni Hada Sayyidun. Indeed, this grandson of mine, even in the ahadith when Rasulullah Ali Salatu Waslam refers to Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan, he says, Ibni. What does Ibni mean? My son. Indeed, this my son, Sayyidun. He is a Sayyid. He is a leader. So one of the title of Hazrat Sayyiduna Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu is Sayyid. And this title was given to him by Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Ke mera beta jo hai, wo Sayyid hai. The meaning of Sayyid is Sardar, a leader. He is a leader. وَلَعَلَّ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُسْلِحَ بِهِ فِئَتَيْنِ عَظِيمَتَيْنِ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soon, he will create peace between two greatest groups of Muslims. What was this? The hadith points at the occasion when Hadrat Sayyidina Ali Shere Khuda radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he was martyred in Kufa. After his martyrdom and after his shahadat, approximately 40,000 people at the same time, they took the allegiance on the hands of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala. And far and wide, Muslims believe that Hazrat Imam Hassan is Khalifa Rashid. He is the Khalifa of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam after Hazrat Sayyidina Ali karamallahu ta'ala wajhahul kareem. But Hazrat Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was leading from his side and it was very much possible that there would be battle between the people of Kufa who were with Sayyidina Hassan and Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 40 to 50,000 people and people of Damascus who were with Hazrat Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who were in large number 70,000 plus. It was very much possible that there would be clash and there would be fight between them in terms of who should lead the Ummah as a leader. Now, Hazrat Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he agreed upon certain condition to leave the Khilafat. So, for approximately five months and four days, and in some narration, five months and ten days, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan remained Khalifa and then on certain conditions he left the Khilafat and there was peace in the Ummah. And the Hadith Pak is pointing at that same occasion. Hadrat Imam Hassan Mujtaba knew that Rasulullah has pre told about this occurrence that there will be two large group of Muslims, they will be in front of each other. I will be the one who will stop the bloodshed. 
سو حضرت امام حسن مشتبہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ہی بیکیم دا ریزن ٹو سیو تھاؤزنڈس آف لائف آف مسلمس بیکاز اف یو لک بیک ان جنگ صفین ان جنگ جمل دیٹ اکھر بٹوین صحابہ تھاؤزنڈس آف مسلمس اف آئی ٹیل یو دی نمبر یو ول بی شاکڈ اینڈ سرپرائز اپروکسیمیٹلی سکسٹی فائیو تھاؤزنڈ ٹو سیونٹی فائیو تھاؤزنڈ صحابہ اینڈ مسلمس دے ور لارج نمبر آف مسلمس دے ور ماٹڈ ان دوز بیٹلس حضرت سیدنا حسن مجتبہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ہی بیکیم دا مین ٹو برنگ پیس ان دی امہ اینڈ فور ٹوینٹی ایئرز آفٹر دیٹ حضرت امیر معاویہ ہی ریمین دی خلیفہ ہی ریمین دی خلیفہ آئی ایم سینگ خلیفہ بیکاز انٹل حضرت امام حسن مجتبہ گیو اپ از خلافت وی بلیو حضرت امیر معاویہ واز the leader and amir not the khalifa because khilafat is given by the people not taken by the leader that is what we believe now hazrat sayyidina hasan e mujtaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu when his khilafat ended according to the hadith of rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam has mentioned in one hadith that the khilafat of my ashab will remain for 30 years for how many years for 30 years and that khilafat ended with the when hazrat sayyidina imam hasan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he gave up the leadership and made way for hazrat amir muawiya radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. now as ahlus sunnati wa jamaat we believe and as a muslim every single kalma go and every single muslim should believe that hazrat imam hasan mujtaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu's decision was the most righteous decision <coughs> however there are people who claim to love ahlul bayt and yet they talk ill about hazrat sayyidina imam e hasan e mujtaba radiyallahu ta'ala and interestingly if you look at the ahl e tashayyu they will talk about hazrat imam e hussein a lot and you will not hear them much talking about hazrat sayyidina imam e حسن مجتبہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ بیکاز دیز ویری پیپل ہو کلیم ٹو لو اہل بیت دے ٹوک ال اباؤٹ حضرت سینا امام حسن مجتبہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ سم پیپل دے گو ٹو سچ ایکسٹینٹ دیٹ دے کول حضرت امام حسن دیٹ ہی ڈی ناٹ ہیو ماز اللہ گٹس ٹو اسٹینڈ ان فرنٹ آف امیر معاویہ دس از ناٹ آور بلیو دس از ناٹ واٹ وی بلیو وی بلیو حضرت امام حسن مجتبہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ڈیڈ واٹ رسول اللہ علیہ صلاۃ وسلام ہیڈ پری ٹول ان ہز حدیث اینڈ دیٹ از واٹ ہی ایکٹیڈ اپون وین پیپل ور آسٹ اینڈ وین پیپل آس حضرت سینا حسن مجتبہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ دیٹ وائی ڈونٹ یو ٹیک خلافت بیک ہی سیڈ رسول اکرم علیہ صلاۃ وسلام ہیز آلریڈی سیڈ I will be the one who will bring peace between two groups of Muslims. What other thing we come to know in terms of Aqeedah is that those who believe that who are with Hazrat Amir Muawiyah, they were Ma'az Allah, Kafir, because they stood against Hazrat Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they need to look at this hadith. Prophet said that between two groups of Muslims, not between a group of Muslim and a Kafir, Therefore, we believe that at that time, those who were with Hazrat Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they weren't kuffar. They were also believers. There were disputes and there were reasons behind it. So, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, after he gave up the khilafat, then he moved from Kufa to Madinatul Munawwara. And he stayed, he stayed in Madina until he passed away very peacefully. Hazrat Sayyidina حسن مشتبہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ از آلسو نون ایز امام الاتقیہ ہی از دا لیڈر آف آل دی پائس پیپل ہی از دا لیڈر آف دوز ہو آر پائس ونس ہی از آور لیڈر حضرت سینا حسن مشتبہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ اکارڈنگ ٹو نریشن آف حضرت امام زین العابدین رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ دیٹ امام حسن رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ڈیڈ ٹوینٹی فائیو حج ان ہز لائف ہاؤ مینی ٹوینٹی فائیو حج And majority of those Hajj that Hazrat Hassan and Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu did, they were on foot. And not wearing any sandals, barefoot, 
he performed Hajj, 25 of them. What a taqwa, what a piety. Somebody asked that, Huzur, you have camels with you. You have transportations with you. Why don't you ride on it? They said, I'm going in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do not feel that I should be riding on anything. I'm presenting myself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My heart tells me that you shouldn't be on any kind of ride and any kind of transportation. We cannot have that taqwa. We cannot have that level of piety in our hearts and in our a'mal. But one thing we can have, we can bring sincerity in our actions. We can bring sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the sake of love of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Another fact that has been mentioned in the books of tarikh and riwayat. Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu did many nikah. And in some narration it says over 100 nikah Hazrat Imam Hassan Mujtaba did in his life. When Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was alive, he used to tell people, don't give your daughter to my son Hassan. Because very soon he gives them divorce. But then still people used to give their daughters to Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan in his nikah. What was the reason? The reason was quite simple. Who would not want to have connection with the family of Rasulullah <laughs> If you have a daughter, and there is a pious Sayyid who wants to marry your daughter, would you say no? Your daughter will have children who will be called Sayyid. And that was the reason that people in the time of Hazrat Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they did not hesitate to give their daughters in the nikah of Hazrat Hassan Mujtaba knowing that very quickly they get divorced. Because they wanted that connection with Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam that their daughters will have on the day of Qiyamah those fathers when they will be raised they will be known as father-in-law of Hazrat Sayyidina Hassan Mujtaba that will become the mean for them to get into Jannah that was the reason Hazrat Sayyidina Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala who did many nikah however the enemies were there the Khawarij were, Khawarij were always there after the life of Ahl Bayt Athar. Somebody like Hazrat Sayyidina Hassan Mujtaba was a threat for them. They might have thought that one day he will turn around and make his own army. And therefore, there were many attempts on the life of Hazrat Imam Hassan. Once he was given poison in honey after he consumed it he became very very ill extremely ill he couldn't function he went to the court of rasulullah ali salatu wasalam and he made dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the effect of that poison from hazrat sayyidina imam hassan mujtaba radiyallahu ta'ala aapko shifa mil gayi but then once in his water very strong poison was given when he consumed few sips of that water he felt as if everything inside was burning and turning into pieces within minutes Hazrat Sayyidina Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala who was vomiting of blood blood was coming out clots of blood pieces of his body from inside they were coming out Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu quickly comes to help his brother. And he says, who did this to, ya, to you, O oh, oh my brother? Who was it? Give me the name. Now look at the reply and look at the way of Ahlul Bayt. They do not take and have courage for people. Intention to have, take revenge from people. بدلے کی بھاونہ جسے ہم کہتے ہیں ہماری زبان میں آج کل پوری زندگی ہماری اسی میں گزر جاتی ہے کہ کسی سے بدلہ کیسے لیں کسی کو نیچا کیسے دکھائیں کسی کی عزت پہ ہاتھ کیسے اٹھائیں اور ہول لائف گوز ان ٹو دس ٹارنشنگ پیپلس عزت 
even in that difficult time hazrat sayyidina hasan e mushtaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he asked his brother sayyidina imam husain if i tell you what will you do to that person imam husain said that person will be punished and executed whoever did this to you that person will be punished executed imam hasan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said if i think and if i know the person that this is the one in my thoughts then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with it and if i give you the name and it is not the person who i think then an innocent soul will be killed because of me i do not want that and then he said oh my brother there have been attempts on me before but this attempt is killing me this is very difficult on me and very soon hazrat sayyidina hasan mushtaba radiyallahu ta'ala who as a result of that extreme poison he departed from this dunya inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un so what do we understand from such occurrence what do we understand the lives of sahaba the way hazrat sayyidina umar ibn khattab was martyred the way sayyidina hazrat uthman was martyred the way sayyidina ali karimallahu ta'ala jahul karim was martyred the way hazrat sayyidina khalifa e khamis hazrat sayyidina imam e hasan e mujtaba was martyred they led an, an example the sacrifice for the deen giving their life for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protecting the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hazrat sayyidina hasan e mujtaba radiyallahu ta'ala in certain narration is been mentioned that he had made the wasiyat to hazrat imam husain radiyallahu ta'ala that when i pass away ask sayyida aisha if she gives the permission for me to get buried next to rasulullah ali sallallahu alaihi because that place belongs to her if she gives the permission then bury me there if she doesn't then wherever hazrat imam hasan radiyallahu ta'ala when he passed away sayyidina imam husain radiyallahu ta'ala who he visited sayyida aisha siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha now she has they accuse sayyida aisha siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha of not giving permission to hazrat imam husain that hazrat imam hasan can be buried next to rasulullah ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is not the reality the reality is sayyida aisha siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha when she was asked by hazrat imam husain radiyallahu ta'ala anhu she did give permission but at that time the ruler of madinatul munawwara was marwan who was a tyrant and he had hatred for ahlul bayt so he commanded people that hazrat imam hasan should not be buried next to rasulullah instead bury him in jannatul baqi and he was the reason that hazrat imam hasan e mujtaba was in buried next to rasulullah ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his final resting place became jannatul baqi his namaz e janaza was led by hazrat sayyidina imam husain radiyallahu ta'ala anhu imagine the time when his own brother who was martyred in such a difficult way in such a hard breaking way and he had to lead the janaza of his own brother his test began from the shahadat of his own father hazrat sayyidina ali karimallahu ta'ala ta'ala wajhul karim the next thing he observed and he saw and he witnessed was the shahadat of his own elder brother hazrat sayyidina imam hasan e mujtaba radiyallahu ta'ala so sayyidina imam husain radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he started his test way earlier than karbala many people think karbala was the sudden test no karbala was the later and final test the test of hazrat sayyidina imam husain radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he began very early i'll mention very briefly about the wiladat of hazrat sayyidina imam husain the young youngest grandson of rasulullah ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the son of hazrat sayyidina ali and khatun jannat sayyida e kainat hazrat e fatimah tu zahra radiyallahu ta'ala anha hazrat imam husain was born on 5th shaban 
Please pray Durood Sharif once. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. Salatan wa salaman alayka ya Rasulullah. Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was born on, on 5th of Sha'ban in 4th Hijri, which is one year after Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Rasul Akram alayhi salatu was salam, as tahniq, he put his saliva in the blessed mouth of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu on 7th day, which is Sunnah, even today. We observe the sunnah of Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. On seventh day, Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam named him Hussein. So Hassan and Hussein. Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam, he named him Hussein. And on the same day, seventh day, Aqika of Hadrat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala who was performed. When we hear the khutbah, we listen to the name of Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala who as Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Abi Abdullah, he was known as Abi Abdullah or Abu Abdullah. His title was Sipte Rasul. Sipte Rasul means somebody who resembles Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. It's been mentioned in the books of Ahadith that Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu from the head to the navel and Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu from the navel to the, the, the bottom. They resembled Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. Sibti Rasul. If we say Sibtain, it refers to both Hasnain. So the name Sibtain is just like Hasnain. Hasnain refers to Hassan and Hussein. Sibtain refers to Hadrat Imam Hassan and Hadrat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Sibti Rasul. Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam, he states in one of the hadiths that I named my children on the Names of the children of Hazrat Harun Ali Salam, Shabir and Shabbar. Shabir and Shabbar is translated as Hassan and Hussein. <laughs> Rasulullah Ali Salatu Salam chose these names. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala granted these names to Rasulullah Ali Salatu Salam. And then he says about both of these names, Hassan and Hussein, Ismani min ahlil Jannah. These names before, these names were not kept for anyone. Nobody kept these names, Hassan and Hussein. Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam, he kept Hassan and Hussein for his grandchildren. And these are the names of people in Jannah. These are Jannati name, in Ahlil Jannah. Jannati name. Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam, he chose these names. When Hazrat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala was about to be born, Hazrat Umm al Fadl binti Haris radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was the auntie of uh, Huzuri Akram Ali Salatu Wasalam and wife of Hazrat Abdullah, Hazrat Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. She had a dream and in her dream she saw that a piece of flesh from the body of Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam has been placed in her lap. When she woke up she was very afraid, anxious about what was this dream about. She goes to Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam and mentioned this dream that Ya Rasulullah, I had this dream. What is the interpretation? Rasul Akram Ali Salatu Wasalam smiled. And Rasul Pak Ali Salatu Wasalam said, Ummul Fazl, very soon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless Fatima with a son and he will be given to you to hold. اس خواب کی تعبیر آپ نے یہ بتائی کہ فاطمہ کے گھر پہ انقریب بیٹا ہوگا اور وہ تمہاری گود میں دیا جائے گا that is what happened حضرت امام حسین رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ was born and he was given حضرت ام الفضل was there at the time and he was given to حضرت ام الفضل and she held حضرت امام حسین رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ رسول اللہ علیہ السلام in one of the hadith states حسین منی و انا من حسین Hussein Mujse hai or me Hussein se hu. Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. That means this is how he is close to me. Hadith Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu states that one day 
I saw Rasulullah Ali Salat was salam that Hadrati Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was given the tongue of Rasulullah Ali Salat was salam and Hadrat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was sucking on the tongue of beloved Habib Ali Salat was salam. This is the phase, direct connection that they had with Rasulullah Ali Salat was salam. Hadrat Imam Jami, Allama Jami rahmatullahi ta'ala ali, in uh, Shawahidun Nubuwat, he mentions a very interesting story. And he says that one day, Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam, he was sitting with Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu on, in his lap on one side, and his own son, Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam's son, Hazrat Ibrahim radiallahu ta'ala anhu on the other side. Whilst he was playing with them, Hazrat Jibreel Ali Salam he comes visiting Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. And Jibreel says, Ya Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave both of these with you together. One of them has to go. Now, Imam Jami rahmatullahi ta'ala says that Rasul Akram alayhi salatu wasalam he thought that if Hussein passes away and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he takes Hussein away, then I will feel the pain. My daughter Fatima will feel the pain and she will be in sorrow. And his father, Hazrat Sina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he will feel the pain. <coughs> and if my son Ibrahim passes away, then it will be only me who will be in so much pain. Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, he chose Hazrat Ibrahim to go. And after three days of this occurrence, Rasul Pak Ali Salatu Waslam's his own son, Hazrat Ibrahim, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, passed away. So Prophet's love with his grandchildren was such an amazing that Rasul Akram Ali Salatu Waslam he sacrificed his own son for the sake of his grandson, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. We'll conclude here today and inshallah. Tomorrow we will listen some of the fadail as well as we'll begin the waqiya of Karbala from tomorrow inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on, keep us on the love of Ahlul Bayt and raise us on the love of Ahlul Bayt on the day of Qiyamah. Wa ma alayna illa al-balahu al-mubeen. As-salamu alaykum. Salatu salam ke liye khade ho jayin. सलाम करते हैं सजरो हजर हुसैन जरे तुम्हारे दर के हैं समशो कमर हुसैन तुमको सलाम करते हैं सजरो हजर हुसैन जरे तुम्हारे दर के हैं समसो कमर हुसैन मंगता नहीं हूँ आपसे कुछ मालो जर हुसैन लुत्फो करम की डाल दो मुझ पर नजर हुसैन तुमको सलाम करते हैं सजरो हजर हुसैन जरे तुम्हारे दर के हैं समसो कमर हुसैन सदका रसूल पाक का मकबूल कर दुआ सर मेरा कर दे बारे लहा संग
दर हुसैन तुमको सलाम करते हैं सजरो हाजर हुसैन जर्रे तुम्हारे दर के हैं शमशो कमर हुसैन दोनों जहां में आपका सानी नहीं कोई बेशक मलक फलक पर जमी पर बासर हुसैन तुमको सलाम करते हैं सजरो हाजर हुसैन जर्रे तुम्हारे दर के हैं शमशो कमर हुसैन एक पल में हो शाम के लश्कर का खातिमा करते अगर जरा सी जो तिरछी नजर हुसैन तुमको सलाम करते हैं सजरो हजर हुसैन जर्रे तुम्हारे दर के हैं समसो कमर हुसैन अहलबैतार 
حضور کے تمام صاحبزادے تمام صاحبزادیاں خاص ستن خاتون جنت سید کائنات حضرت فاطمۃ الزہرا رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کی روح کو ایسال کرتے ہیں قبول فرما حضرات حسن کریمین رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہما کی روحوں کو ایسال کرتے ہیں قبول فرما پھر خاص ستن شہدا کربلا حضرت امام علی مقام کے ساتھ شریک ہونے والے شہید ہونے والے تمام شرکا اور شہدا کی ارواح کو ایسال کرتے ہیں قبول فرما ان تمام عظیم ہستیوں کے توسط سے تمام صاحب کرام تمام صحابیہ تمام تابعین طب تابعین ائم مشتحدین تابعات طب تابعات ان تمام کی روحوں کو ایسال کرتے ہیں قبول فرما امت رسول کے تمام اولیاء کرام کے ارواح کو ایسال کرتے ہیں قبول فرما خاص پیر پیراں میر میراں سے نہ شیخ عبد القادر جیلانی شہباز علامہ مکانی کی روح کو ایسال کرتے ہیں قبول فرما حضرت داتا گنج بخش علی حجوری خواجہ معین الدین چشتی حسن سنجری اور تمام سلاسل کے تمام بزرگان دین کی ارواح کو ایسال کرتے ہیں قبول فرما ان تمام عظیم ہستیوں کے توسط سے تمام مؤمنین مؤمنات کی ارواح کو ایسال کرتے ہیں قبول فرما جتنے ہمارے حاضرین حاضرات یہاں حاضر ہیں اپنے گھروں میں سن رہے ہیں ان تمام سامعین کہ جتنے بھی عیز و اقربا صاحب ایمان رخصت ہوئے ہیں ان تمام کی روحوں کو ایسال کرتے ہیں قبول فرما ان تمام کی مفرت فرما ان تمام کو کربٹ کربٹ رحمتیں اور برکتیں عطا فرما ان کی روحوں کو تسکین عطا فرما جنت الفردوس میں اعلیٰ ترین مقام عطا فرما خاص اس مبارک محفل کے توسط سے مولا کریم ہم تمام کے گناہ سزائر و قبائر کو معاف فرما مولا کریم ہماری خطاؤں کو درگزر فرما جو ستار ہے پردہ پوشی فرما صدر فرما مولا کریم ہم تمام پر اپنا خاص فضل و کرم فرما ہمارے گھروں پر ان محفلوں کے توسط سے اپنی رحمتوں کا نزول فرما ان محافل کے صدقے میں ہمیں تیری بارگاہ میں سر جھکانے کی توفیق عطا فرما ہمارے دلوں کو تیری طرف پھیر دے مولا کریم تو دلوں کو پھیرنے والا ہے ہم تمام کے دلوں کو دنیا سے دور کر کے تیری طرف پھیر دے ہم تمام کو اہل بیت اطہار صحاب کرام کی سچی محبت عطا فرما اسی محبت پر ہمیں اور ہماری نسلوں کو زندہ رکھ اسی پر ہمیں خاتمہ بالخیر عطا فرما جو حضرات بیمار ہیں ان عظیم محافل کے توسط سے ان تمام کو شفا کاملا و عاجلہ عطا فرما تمام بھائیوں اور بہنوں کو مولا کریم تندرستی عطا فرما مولا کریم جو اپنے گھروں میں گھریلو معاملات میں پریشان ہیں ان تمام کو پریشانیوں سے نجات عطا فرما جو چھت کی تلاش میں مولا کریم ان تمام کو ان تمام کو رہائش عطا فرما جو رزق کی تلاش میں ان تمام کے لیے رزق حلال کے ذرائع کو مہیا فرما جب تک زندہ رکھ ایمان پر زندہ رہ ایمان پر خاتمہ بالخیر عطا فرما خاص طور پر ہم اپنے غزہ کے مسلمان بھائیوں کے لیے دعا کرتے ہیں فلسطین اور کشمیر اور جہاں جہاں مظلوم مسلمان ہیں ان تمام کے لیے دعا کرتے ہیں مولا کریم اس مبارک مہینے کے توسط سے شہدا کربلا کے صبر کے صدقے میں ان تمام کو سکون اور تسکین اور ظلم سے رہائی عطا فرما ظالموں کو مولا کریم زیر فرما صلی اللہ تعالی علی خیر خلق ہی و نور عرش ہی محمد و آل ہی و صحب ہی اجمعین رحمت کے ارحم الرحمین جزاکم اللہ